Welcome to e know -how. In this video, we will look at how the mobility of electrons and holes vary with temperature, doping, and the applied electric field. So we, we saw that the mobility mu or mu n or mu p uh, with, that is what determines the how much current flows through a semiconductor, the amount of current that flows through a semiconductor, whether it be a drift current or a diffusion current. So both drift and diffusion currents depend on mobility. Both the drift and diffusion currents depend on mobility. So now let's look at how mobility varies with the temperature. So if uh, you plot mobility with temperature mu and basically it's a log scale, log scale and then temperature here so you would you'll see a curve a bow kind of curve so here the peak really occurs at around minus 75 degrees centigrade so minus 75 degrees centigrade is where the peak occurs so what we can say is that most of our region of interest is right here because we usually never operate any ICs below uh, minus 75 degrees centigrade. So this is where our region of interest is, the one, uh, the circle. In this case, the mobility actually falls with respect to temperature t power minus 3 by 2. Whereas here, mobility increases t power 3 by 2 here. So the peak occurs here. So in our area of interest, we can say that mobility decreases. Mu is uh, inversely proportional to temperature. So mobility decreases with the temperature. Why this happens is because there is something called a, a phenomenon called lattice scattering. So as the temperature increases, there is more lattice scattering and more hindrance for the flow of electrons and holes. So that is the reason why mobility decreases. And in this area, in this area, why mobility uh, decreases again as you go lower in temperature is because of a phenomenon called impurity scattering. Impurity scattering, which will be magnified at very very low temperatures, but really we are not not interested in this area, usually for operation of integrated circuits. Now let's look at how the mobility varies with the doping. So now, if you take, say, doping, could be p or n type. So this is uh, mobility. Again, this is log scale. So now if you put Na or Nd, which is the acceptor or the donor, ion, donor concentration, this is per centimeter cube. So if you put this on the x-axis, so at zero, it's basically intrinsic silicon. So at zero, usually you will have the highest mobility. So mu n would look like this, keeps falling. Mu p starts lower. But again keeps falling. You will see the similar curves. This is mu n and mu p. These keep falling as you put more and more impurities in silicon. Why does this happen? This happens because of impurity scattering. So, so these are like you have Na and Nd, the acceptor Acceptor, I, acceptor impurity is boron, which only has three electrons. And uh, the donor impurity is usually phosphorus, which has five electrons, valence electrons. So what happens is these disturb the flow of, as you keep adding more and more impurities in the silicon crystal, in the lattice, what we call the lattice, so now lattice consists of not just SI atoms, 
but it will you usually you have boron or phosphorus atoms are added to the lattice either this or this is added to the silicon lattice so then what happens is you the electrons and holes are disturbed by this boron and uh, phosphorus uh, atoms and the mobility falls and usually at uh, like the the typical just to give an example of mobilities mu n is approximately 1350 centimeter square over volt second and mu p is around 480 centimeter square per volt second this is at 300 degrees Kelvin that is 27 degrees centigrade so the mobility falls with more and more doping so now let's look at what happens to mobility with the applied electric field so now the electric field is so for example you have an a semiconductor material like this and then you apply a voltage V here this is V and this is ground and so and assume this length is L so now the electric field is V over L and now as you keep reducing L so if you keep reducing L the electric field keeps increasing for the same voltage the electric field keeps increasing and then the the electrons will reach a electrons or holes will reach a very high velocity so as the electric field increases the velocity increases and then there is something called a thermal velocity so that is the limit so there is a limit a thermal velocity limit and after that what happens is you are the electric field imparts energy to the lattice rather than increasing the velocity so the velocity is not increased so v vd is basically drift velocity is mu times e we saw that but what happens is once the value of e becomes too large then you if you plot the the drift velocity with respect to the electric field here electric field and VD here usually you want to expect a straight line curve like this with a slope of mu but after a certain point the drift velocity saturates so now that's why there is the mobility falls so what we can say is mobility mobility falls with large electric fields so short channel devices usually suffer this large electric fields so if you have very short and short lengths here this length and then you could have a lower mobility than if you compare a sample with a larger length here so that's how the mobility varies with um, temperature doping and electric field